This story is about a girl named Jane. She has been living alone far from home for four years. She could never find a job. She was simply fired from everywhere. A typical failure. But Jane did not give up and found another job. Even the road to it seemed strange and eerie to her, and the house itself was no different from those in typical horror movies. But this did not surprise our Jane. The main rule of the house was not to leave the room after 9 p.m. But what was poor Jane to do? When the oddities began on the very first night of her stay, and it made Jane wake up as if from a terrible nightmare, she definitely heard some strange sounds. Jane woke up with a strong thirst and her head felt foggy. So she decided to break the only rule and leave the room. She made it to the kitchen and poured herself some water. Suddenly, she heard that same sound. She had heard it when she woke up. So it wasn't a dream. Jane turned back in fear. That dark corridor beckoned and frightened her at the same time. In an instant, the fire went out and it became dark. Jane was terrified and she decided to figure this out. It seemed she was not alone there. Jane made a mistake and ended up somewhere she didn't want to be. Suddenly, she felt something behind her. Her eyes seemed to become hypnotized and the fear vanished. This house definitely has some mystery and Jane intends to unravel it. Morning came after Jane's first night at this job. Layla introduced the newcomer to the rest of the staff. Besides her, there were many other people there. Layla didn't wait and quickly took Jane to show her the work. It seemed she was more excited than Jane herself and couldn't wait to start working. Jane was taken to the backyard and shown the main building. It turned out that everything inside was old and dusty. Jane lifted her head. She wondered, could the house really be that old? Suddenly, she saw him there. She had seen this man when she made her way through the dreadful dark paths to her workplace. The man immediately offered to show her around. He said he wasn't a bad person so Jane could safely follow him. But it was strange. How did he know Jane was going to this house for work? In fact, the oddities had begun even then. Her watch turned out to be broken. And Layla was in a room that hadn't heard about Jane's interview. There was also no electricity in the house. A strange rule that leaving the room after 9 p.m. was forbidden. And also the phone that Jane had managed to break on her way to the house. There was no signal. Jane stared at that man in the window for a while. For some reason, he intrigued her. Layla noticed this and interrupted her stream of thoughts and memories, and led her further to show the scope of the work. Jane was told to carry heavy boxes in the main two-story building. Her back ached badly, as it turned out to be harder than she thought. But that man still wouldn't leave her mind. Why was he in the abandoned building? A flurry of thoughts filled her head. Why did her body ache so much? Why was she even concerned about that man? Jane noticed that it wasn't so dark during the day, probably because of the candles. The thought of what happened the previous night wouldn't leave her. Speculations gnawed at her all day, so Jane opened the door to a room. Inside, there was a very beautiful blonde. Jane thought that besides maids, there were also princesses in this house. But she couldn't just walk out like that, so she awkwardly greeted her. But the lady didn't say a word or give a kind glance. She even turned away from Jane. The maid decided that the lady wasn't in a good mood, so she continued to do her work when suddenly she was asked who she was. Jane was shocked and turned in a stupor. The lady said that the outfit looked familiar to her and asked again who Jane was and what she was doing there. She even stood up and looked down at Jane, waiting for answers. Suddenly, someone entered and interrupted this pleasant conversation. It was Layla. She said that the mistress was looking for her. It seemed the lady got angry that her interrogation was interrupted. Layla explained that they had a newcomer. Meanwhile, the girls decided to have tea that Layla brought. The maid felt so uncomfortable sitting there because she felt like she was being burned by ashes. The lady didn't take her eyes off Jane. Then the maid decided to leave since she still needed to finish her work. Suddenly, her expression changed sharply. It turned out that the dish they were drinking from had simply shattered. But how? Jane couldn't understand how it happened since the cup was standing still. Layla smiled, saying that everything was fine and asked to bring another cup. Jane looked away and saw the lady's gaze, which indicated that Jane hadn't broken the cup. She was set up, but it was better for Jane to remain silent. Suddenly, as she was leaving, her expression changed again. For before her stood an even more beautiful blonde woman who, in a pleasant voice, asked if Jane had hurt herself. Jane immediately realized that this was the mistress of the house and nervously apologized to her. But the mistress was not alone. She was with the man Jane had been thinking about all day. In her stupor, she even forgot to greet them. But when she began to speak, they didn't listen and left. Meanwhile, the event shifted to the second floor, to the storeroom, where Jane was gnawing at herself with thoughts that she had done something wrong. Was it possible that those ladies weren't quite right in the head? Jane couldn't take her eyes off them. Perhaps they were just in a bad mood. Meanwhile, night fell and Jane simply collapsed into her bed. Layla laughed at her, as she had the same unfortunate first day. Jane asked if she looked that way. After all, she hadn't even touched that cup. It was that young lady who broke it. Layla ignored her words and asked if Jane knew Mr. Uberly. It turned out he was the gentleman who had been with the mistress. When Layla was cleaning, 
she heard Mr. Uberly's voice. She apologized that the newcomer had been careless and promised to clean everything up. Mr. Uberly immediately threw a glance at Layla. She quickly looked away, which only revealed her further. Mr. Uberly said he understood that Jane was still learning, but it was reckless to give such work since the mistress and the young lady lived on the second floor. Then the mistress intervened, her voice as sweet as honey, saying not to be so harsh since Jane hadn't done it on purpose. Layla apologized, saying she should have been more careful. She told Jane all this and added that she even blushed when she was scolded. Jane felt ashamed, but she didn't understand why they scolded her neighbor. Suddenly, the strange maid became cheerful again and shifted the conversation to the fact that Jane truly didn't know Mr. Uberly. Layla said she thought they were acquainted. Mr. Uberly never seemed to care about anything. Jane apologized again for being scolded, but Layla was no longer offended. Jane asked if Mr. Uberly also lived in the house and nearly revealed that she was interested in him. It turned out that the gentleman was a guest of the mistress, but the situation still wouldn't leave Jane's mind. Jane had a very bad feeling, Mr. Uberly said, that what he was about to do was bad. Jane's work was going well. That man no longer appeared. Due to the lack of guests, Jane only had to clean, cook, and do laundry. She almost felt at home there, but there was one thing. Jane had to avoid the young lady's gaze. After all, that wretch had caused her a lot of trouble. But in reality, Jane felt very sorry for her. Even Layla said to avoid the young lady, since it was definitely a bad idea. But the young lady wouldn't leave, and Jane didn't want to go around her. The weather was wonderful, but why was the young lady alone? She was truly lonely, as her mother had health problems, and her father was always away. The young lady was indeed sad and thought that no one would even notice her. Jane had already hung up the laundry and dared to speak to the young lady, even though she knew it was a bad idea. She asked what the mistress was doing. Suddenly, the young lady's expression changed sharply. After all, Jane was very friendly with her and literally radiated kindness and warmth. The young lady replied that she was just sitting and asked if that couldn't be done. Jane said that the weather was incredible, so she was curious about what the mistress was up to. The young lady asked what business she had with the weather. Jane replied that she heard the mistress had recently moved in, so she was probably lonely, and added that on such a wonderful day it would be nice to take a walk. Suddenly Jane's expression changed sharply, for the young lady stood up, and her eyes, they seemed to shine. Something was definitely off with them. The mistress became seriously angry, asking if she understood correctly that some maid decided to lecture her. Jane was in shock. After that, the young lady suddenly began to scream very loudly. Jane tried to apologize, saying she thought the young lady was sad. This made the mistress stop and calm down. The young lady turned around and asked again. Jane said she understood that her words had crossed the line, but she hadn't meant to. The young lady asked after an awkward pause if she looked lonely. Jane said a little to avoid provoking her again. The young lady asked if the maid could help her. Jane said she would do everything possible. The young lady spoke of an intriguing book she possessed. Suddenly, she blushed deeply and turned away in shame. Jane smiled and said she could read it. But first, she needed to finish the laundry. The young lady was overjoyed and scheduled a meeting at nine in her room. Jane was surprised. Did the young lady not know the rule? But there was no choice. The young lady was indeed still such a child. Meanwhile, evening fell. Events shifted to the main building. She knocked on the young lady's door, but no one answered. Then suddenly the door behind her opened by itself. Jane decided it might be the young lady and stepped inside. But the room was empty. Or was it? Jane noticed a foot just on the floor. Suddenly everything inside her went cold. Jane was in shock. After that, the sound echoed again. This same sound Jane had heard that day, her first night in this house. Jane abruptly left the room. She could not be trapped there. Afterwards, she headed to the young lady's room and nervously tugged at the handle. She pleaded, begging the lady to come out. Then, suddenly, Jane heard those sounds again. But now, from the young lady's room, she understood clearly that it had been there all along. Jane began to scream again, begging them to stop playing tricks on her and to open the door. Suddenly, the light went out, but the sounds did not cease. Out of fear, Jane could not even tell where they were coming from anymore. She covered her mouth with her hands and froze. She felt it approaching. Such darkness made Jane recall those memories. Her first night in this house, she turned around and distinctly saw something in the hallway. A girl with long hair. That creaking was because of her. Suddenly, the ghost stopped and froze. Jane realized this was not a good sign, for the ghostly girl had noticed her. And then Jane began to run quickly, and the ghostly girl moved on. Jane realized her mistake too late. Those steps, which instilled primal fear, vanished. Jane wanted so badly to leave, but she was terrified. She recalled the words of the neighbor, who warned against wandering after nine o'clock. Jane regretted not asking more questions back then. Suddenly, she remembered that foot. She had completely forgotten about it. What if someone had fallen ill? Jane decided she could cautiously leave the room. Suddenly, a white hand approached her leg. Jane's eyes widened sharply. 
She could not believe what she was seeing. The hand grabbed her leg. Jane covered her mouth with her hands so no one would hear her screams, but her frantic heartbeat betrayed her. Her mind was filled with questions. She did not understand what was happening at all. Meanwhile, the doorknob of the young lady's room began to shake violently. Jane could not comprehend who it was and what was wrong with this house. Previously, Jane had applied for normal jobs that at least were in civilization, but she had been turned away from everywhere. Jane sought any job, and she no longer cared where, as long as she was accepted. Layla told her it was unwise to walk alone here, and suggested that Jane not go anywhere this time. After that, Jane woke up alone in her bed in a daze. Could it all have been a dream? But no, Jane was definitely on the second floor. Suddenly, she noticed something that made her insides go cold. There was a handprint on her leg. The first thing Jane wanted to do upon waking was to free herself. But she needed to think it through. After all, even if she freed herself, where would she go? Jane felt very sleepy, as if she had been beaten all night. Her body was battered. Suddenly, someone called her. It took several calls as Jane was slow to respond. It was Layla, joking that if Jane let go of the vase, it would break. Layla noticed Jane's bewildered expression and asked what had happened. But in response, she heard a false, I'm fine, and a similar smile. Not much time passed, but the events of the previous night kept surfacing in Jane's mind. Was it a hallucination or a dream? If it was a dream, when had she fallen asleep? And in the morning, a sharp pain in her ankle. Meanwhile, the maids realized they had forgotten to change the linens on the second floor. The conversation turned to the second floor. That dreadful room had to still be there. Suddenly, Jane suggested she would take the sheets herself. Layla pondered this. Another maid said it was her responsibility and she could not trust anyone else with it. Suddenly, Layla interjected, saying Jane looked capable. So she asked to give Jane a chance to help. Such interest was a bit unsettling. But Layla assured her it was not so, and Jane was very pleased. Although when the maid went to carry out the task, she was troubled by Layla's words, but decided not to dwell on it. At first, Jane thought the reason lay in her distrustfulness. But the house was indeed very strange, and at times even eerie. Jane decided she would quit as soon as she had the chance. So for now, she would work. Besides, all the oddities occurred at night. The main thing was not to break the rule, and also to avoid that room. Jane swallowed hard, gathering her thoughts. It seemed that the mark on her leg had even grown cold, and she opened the door. The first thing that surprised her was that the room had been in disarray the previous night, but now it was in perfect order. But what had she seen then? Jane decided something must have been left in the room. She began to rummage through everything, to find at least something, at least some evidence. But unfortunately, nothing. Jane was left to fall into despair in the middle of the room, after which she pulled herself together, for something must have remained. Suddenly behind her, through a crack, a strange eye was watching. Jane felt a foreign presence, for that gaze sent chills down her spine. But now there was no one or nothing there. Jane stepped into the hallway and saw the young lady, who quickly fled from the maid. But Jane did not give up and shouted, for she wanted to know the truth. Her cries were interrupted by Layla, who suddenly appeared. She was, as always, very cheerful and inquired if help was needed. Jane declined and felt very angry inside, for she so wanted to question that wretch. Layla laughed again for some reason. This was beginning to irritate Jane. They went outside to hang the laundry. Jane noticed that all the guest rooms were very clean, so she asked if they were expecting someone. It turned out that Mr. Uberly would be visiting them again. If one looked closely at this gentleman, he gave the impression of a lover of lectures. Moreover, Jane did not want to see him anymore. But as luck would have it, she noticed that at that very moment, Mr. Uberly was openly staring at her. Was he planning to approach her? Jane calmed down, for it was probably just a coincidence. But it still troubled her for some reason. Meanwhile, Jane learned that Mr. Uberly was a doctor. In surprise, she even dropped her cookie. The others were puzzled as to why Jane was so shocked by this information. She said it was just unexpected, but in reality, she thought it did not suit Mr. Uberly at all. It turned out that the health of the lady of the house and the young lady was deteriorating, so the doctor came for a visit. So that was why they rarely went outside. The maid said that every time health worsened, the family doctor would come to treat them. Jane was surprised that there was another doctor, and Layla was surprised that Jane had not noticed him next to Mr. Uberly. It turned out that Mr. Uberly was merely an assistant for now. Suddenly, Layla whispered in Jane's ear that she thought she was really smitten with Mr. Uberly. Jane even blushed at such a statement, and Layla suggested she go rest. Jane's cries and outrage were interrupted by the clock, and the maids were told it was time to go to bed. Jane was left alone in the dark. Layla came in behind her and told her to go to her room. Jane decided it was best to leave quickly to avoid those oddities. Suddenly, a shiver ran through her body. She looked around in shock, for she was certain she had not imagined it. That cold she would never forget. Layla asked what had happened. Jane turned and said she was fine, forcing a false smile. Meanwhile, a new day dawned. Morning. 
Layla began talking about Mr. Uberly again. Jane grew irritated and protested that it was enough to talk about him. Layla said it was strange, for she usually had a good intuition about such things. Then she said that in any case, these were not ordinary relations, which again angered Jane. Layla said it was not worth hiding, for Mr. Uberly had been searching for Jane with his gaze all along. She believed it was love at first sight. Jane stated for the last time that they had met for the first time in this house, but Layla did not hear her at all. Then she changed the subject to Jane's well-being. Layla added that Jane looked terrible. She replied that she had been feeling dizzy since the morning, and Layla told her to go rest. And then she suggested they first go into the living room. Jane reached for a cloth. Suddenly, she felt it again. A chill ran through her body. Since the previous day, Jane had felt that gaze upon her. Meanwhile, the events shifted to the second floor in the living room. Jane sat on the windowsill, unable to understand why things were only getting worse. She decided that perhaps it was indeed worth listening to Layla and taking a rest. Suddenly, her eyes grew very heavy, and her body felt like lead. Jane began to fall out of the open window, but Mr. Uberly caught her. Was he watching over her? Or was it just a fortunate coincidence? Their eyes met when Jane came to her senses. She thanked him for saving her. Mr. Uberly silently studied Jane. Then she asked him to let go of her hand. Mr. Uberly finally spoke, apologizing for his rudeness. Jane left, though she still swayed a bit from side to side. The doctor noticed this but remained silent. Jane had a strange feeling, as if someone was dragging her. Jane ran quickly under the same sounds, a thumping noise. She was fleeing, very much fleeing, and calling for help. But no one heard her. She was utterly alone. Suddenly, Jane woke up. The place she found herself in seemed quite familiar. After which, she got up and held her head, which felt like it had been hammered all the time. Suddenly, someone asked Jane if she was awake. It turned out Mr. Uberly was sitting next to her. While Jane wondered why he was there, the doctor asked if she had any complaints. She said her head hurt a bit and asked for medicine, but Mr. Uberly refused her. What kind of doctor had no medicine for headaches? Meanwhile, Mr. Uberly said that Jane should refrain from eating for now. He explained it was due to psychological issues, but promised that everything would normalize over time. What psychological issues did Jane have? The doctor said he also wanted to ask a question. Suddenly, his voice softened. Jane even blushed a little. But at that moment, Layla walked in. Upon seeing her friend, she immediately bombarded her with questions and concern. Meanwhile, Mr. Uberly quietly left. Layla brought water since Jane couldn't eat. And Jane noticed that Mr. Uberly had disappeared. And she didn't like that she still hadn't found out what he wanted to ask her. Layla asked if Jane had thanked Mr. Uberly. But the maid didn't quite understand what she should be grateful for. Suddenly, Layla began to dramatically recount how Mr. Uberly had carried Jane all the way. Her friend even spat out water in shock, but her cheeks turned red. She asked why the doctor had done that, which left Layla speechless. But then she began to speak again in that romantic tone, saying she would be straightforward. Jane exhaled and braced herself to hear nonsense about love at first sight. But suddenly she was surprised. Layla simply said that Jane was lucky Mr. Uberly was nearby. She added that if she had been alone, it would have ended badly. Jane suddenly softened and apologized, asking if her friend had been scared. Then she pondered how she could repay Mr. Uberly. Jane suddenly realized just then that she was in a room of some man as the things there were just like that. Jane jumped out of bed and decided it was better to flee from there as quickly as possible. But Layla forcibly laid her back down and said the doctor told Jane to rest. Even the hostess agreed with that. She continued that the hostess said Jane should check herself before leaving. Moreover, the family doctor was there. Then Layla prepared to leave as she had some work to do and ordered Jane to rest until the doctor came for her. So Jane had no choice but to wrap herself in a blanket. She had so many nightmares that she hadn't felt rested even after sleeping, and she didn't even notice how deeply she fell asleep. She was awakened by some rustling. She thought it was Layla, but it wasn't Layla. It was the family doctor. Jane jumped up abruptly, apologized, saying she had accidentally fallen asleep. But the doctor didn't mind. Then she realized that this was the same family doctor of the house's hostess. Jane immediately fell in love with the doctor's smile. It was like a ray of sunshine. The doctor began to speak first, saying he had heard about Jane's fainting and added that fortunately the maid was healthy. The doctor continued that probably long-term stress was the cause of the fainting, so he advised Jane to rest well. Suddenly, the doctor's voice turned more serious. He said that Jane had recently found herself there and had already experienced significant stress. So he asked if her work there was exhausting her, but Jane denied it all. Then the doctor's voice became even more mysterious, and he said, If that's not the case, had Jane noticed any strange occurrences there? At those words, the maid felt a shiver run down her spine. Did he know something? Then the doctor turned and asked if Jane had seen any ghosts. Could it be that he really knew something? Jane sat on the bed, folding her arms. Everything was written on her face. But she asked what the doctor meant by talking about ghosts. She decided that they could help her here. A sly smile appeared on the doctor's face, and he asked if it was a good joke. Jane even felt a bit upset. 
and the doctor said he wouldn't be surprised by ghosts either, as this house was very old. Inside, Jane felt the last flicker of hope had died. So she got up and said goodbye to the doctor. Suddenly, the doctor wanted to tell her that sharing her experiences was also a good way to relieve stress. He advised her not to wait for fainting spells. Jane smiled at the joke and thanked him. The doctor sweetly said goodbye to her. Jane was about to leave, but something stopped her. Her body seemed unresponsive and just froze. Jane wished she could rely on someone, so she turned back to the doctor and said she had something to tell him. Meanwhile, it grew darker. Jane finally told everything, and she felt so relieved. She left the room, headed to her own as Layla was probably worried. Suddenly, she was stopped by Mr. Uberly. Had he been sitting by the door all this time waiting for Jane? She realized this was a great chance to thank the doctor. Jane began to speak, but Mr. Uberly commanded her to stop. He was very serious. The maid was even frightened by such a tone of conversation. Mr. Uberly asked how long Jane had been working there, but he had seen her first day. Why ask? Then began the interrogation about whether Jane had been assigned anywhere and if anything similar had happened to her before moving in. Jane wanted to explain what had happened to her and deceive him again, but Mr. Uberly didn't let her finish her sentence, asking if Jane could leave from there. The maid was shocked, as it wasn't even advice. Jane said she could leave, of course, but only when she wanted to. In reality, she was just at a loss for words from shock and audacity. Mr. Uberly agreed, but Jane suddenly became very agitated and shouted for the doctor to wait. Jane didn't want to let him go like that and said she also had something to say, but Mr. Uberly said it wasn't worth it. The maid was shocked again by such audacity. Mr. Uberly simply left, saying it was late and they would leave this conversation. But Jane didn't give up easily and ran after Mr. Uberly. The door closed right in front of her nose. She didn't make it. Jane was so furious. How could he behave like that with her? He said what he wanted and just left. And why was it even late? Jane returned to her room and thought she had just narrowly escaped a dangerous moment. Did Mr. Uberly worry about her? But then she stopped and began to push those thoughts out of her head. He definitely didn't know how to care for anyone. On the other hand, Jane felt uncomfortable not knowing the time. But she had a watch. Meanwhile, she returned to her room. Layla inquired about her friend's condition. Jane immediately began searching for her watch, and Layla asked if her friend had seen Mr. Uberly. At that name, Jane flinched. She lied, saying they hadn't even spoken. Then Layla ordered her to change quickly and rest, and Jane finally found her watch. Although the glass was broken, it could be replaced, and she could still use the watch. Jane suddenly wanted to ask Layla a question. She wanted to know about the rule of not going out after 9 o'clock. Layla had told her about it, and Jane asked if there was any special reason for it. Layla didn't understand anything, and so Jane thought she had been too rude. But Layla interrupted her apology and asked what Jane meant, and she asked if she had said it wasn't worth going out after 9 o'clock. Meanwhile, morning arrived. Jane sat outside and thought about her own matters. She took out her watch and kept thinking about Layla. Her friend said she probably had a bad memory, but she didn't remember that. After all, the workday ended at 8, so there was no need to just go out after 9. Layla said it wasn't a rule, and after that, Jane couldn't ask any more questions. Jane agreed that it was strange to have a curfew. If Jane hadn't talked to her, and the lady hadn't asked her to help, she would have been in her room. Jane said aloud that there was definitely something about nine o'clock. Suddenly, she felt a heat rush over her again. Jane turned sharply as she felt someone watching. She knew it for sure, but she was utterly alone. Jane began to doubt herself, thinking she was just too fearful. But this mansion truly was very mysterious. When Jane told the doctor everything, she also showed him the scar on her leg. Jane said it hurt and the pain throbbed. The doctor spoke so calmly as if this were not the first time. He said it seemed to him that it truly was a handprint, and it appeared that it had been placed there intentionally. The doctor said it was likely an accident and suggested simply to observe it. Jane did not understand what was wrong with this doctor. Did he not find it strange? After all, he had not taken Jane seriously from the very beginning. He apologized, saying he could not help the maid at that moment. Jane said it was all fine and thanked him for the examination. The doctor added that Jane should come to him if she felt unwell again. But Jane realized she would definitely not go to him or his assistant again. The maid decided to rest, as she had started to cough quite a bit. But when she stood up, she felt it again. She screamed for it to stop, after which she simply grabbed onto something, and it turned out she had caught the young lady. She screamed that it hurt, although Jane barely held her hand. What a spoiled child. Jane asked why the young lady had been following her. The young lady looked down and said she was in her own home and had nothing to do with the maid. Jane said that if the young lady had just been watching, there would be nothing wrong with that. But she wanted to ruin her life. Suddenly, the maid fell silent. She realized that Layla had said not to go out after nine, and the young lady had called her right at that time. It could not be a coincidence. Jane asked the young lady why she had acted that way then. The maid said that that evening, the young lady had called her but never opened the door. The young lady said she truly wanted Jane to come to her, 
it was sincere. But the maid did not believe her, saying she had deliberately closed the door. The young lady wanted to say what she had been doing that day, but her sentences were very strange. And suddenly she said she had wanted to scare Jane that day, but she hadn't thought that it would be so unfortunate. At this phrase, the young lady suddenly fell silent. She covered her mouth with her hands, realizing she had said too much. After which, she abruptly fled, although Jane tried to learn more. The maid wanted to catch the young lady again. When suddenly she saw the hand of a little girl, Jane was left speechless. She was shocked. The young lady saw that she had inadvertently revealed her bruises. Jane could not take her eyes off them. Could that leg have belonged to the young lady? Jane asked if the young lady had hurt herself, given her hand. The maid froze and did not know what to say. Suddenly, the young lady grabbed her by her clothing and yanked her down sharply. The young lady said Jane was perceptive, and then, in a very harsh tone, said that the maid had seen nothing and asked if Jane remembered that. There was a threat in her voice, after which she turned and left abruptly. Jane stood up and thought that there was truth in the young lady's words, but it was already too late. How could the maid not be worried when she saw that with her own eyes? Jane decided she would definitely get to the bottom of this. It turned out that Layla had been watching. Meanwhile, the events shifted to the main building on the second floor. Jane wondered where she had gone when she came up here. Perhaps to the mistress's room. Jane searched for the young lady. Could she have hidden here? There was not much to see through the crack, so it was unclear if anyone was inside. Suddenly, something fell and clicked. It was a key. But why was it lying there? Jane's mind was in such a jumble, she understood nothing at all. Lost in thought, Jane did not even notice when someone placed a hand on her shoulder. She screamed in fright and the doctor asked if spying was also part of the maid's duties. The door opened cautiously. Jane tried to explain what she was doing there and made up a lie on the spot. Suddenly, Mr. Uberly stepped out. Jane immediately looked down, feeling ashamed. But then she looked at Mr. Uberly and blushed completely. The men went somewhere to settle their affairs. Jane was outraged that Mr. Uberly had just walked away like that. Did he not notice that Jane had been spying? But Mr. Uberly suddenly turned around and shot her a sharp, angry look. Jane realized that he had indeed seen her. With these thoughts, the maid did not even notice that someone else had exited. It turned out to be the mistress. She was once again so pleasant. Jane felt so flustered that she began to bow and apologize. The mistress did not understand why each of their meetings began with Jane's apologies. The maid said goodbye, and the mistress understood that Jane was probably tired. Jane was angry that she had not found the young lady but had stumbled upon him again. Suddenly, she heard a thud. It turned out that the mistress had stumbled. Jane immediately ran over to help. It turned out that the mistress had suddenly felt dizzy. The mistress asked Jane to help her back to bed. The maid did not understand how a human body could be so cold. But then he came in and said he would take the mistress himself. Mr. Uberly looked at Jane and ordered her to return to her room, after which the door closed right in front of her. Jane stood in shock. Who did he think she was? Jane had come to help a sick person. She should have been praised. It seemed she had turned out to be an unnecessary witness. Suddenly, Jane assured herself that this was not something that should concern an ordinary maid and she sarcastically apologized aloud for being so dim-witted. Suddenly, someone scared Jane again. This time, it was Layla. The maids went outside, and Layla tried to find out what had happened on the second floor. Jane could not lie because Layla had been on the second floor and had seen everything. Jane admitted that she had wanted to catch up with the young lady. Layla asked if that little troublemaker had bothered her again. Jane said she just wanted to ask the young lady a question. Layla said she could always come to her with questions. It turned out that Layla had previously been responsible for the young lady. The friend's area of responsibility was the second floor, only because Jane was in her training, and she said that the young lady was not such a conflictual person. From Jane's expression, Layla understood that she was not believed, so she tried to prove the opposite. Layla shared that just recently the young lady had caused her a lot of trouble, but she assured that soon she would distance herself from Jane. Suddenly, a puzzle clicked into place in Jane's mind. She asked when Layla had started working here. The friend said she poorly remembered that time. Jane could not believe that Layla had forgotten it. The friend pretended that she really did not remember. Why she did not inspire much trust and seemed to be withholding information all the time. Layla inquired why Jane was asking, and she said she was just curious. Jane did not believe her friend. Suddenly her leg began to hurt again, and then Jane noticed something. She was holding a sheet that was stained with blood. Jane was simply in shock as there was so much blood. She screamed sharply, after which she fell just as sharply. Her legs could not hold her. Layla ran over and asked what had happened. Jane was speechless. She pointed to the sheet which she had thrown away in shock. But Layla asked what was wrong with the sheet. She asked if there was something on it. Jane could not believe it. Could she really see nothing? Other maids asked what had happened. Layla said that Jane had just felt unwell. Jane was actually just trembling. She was amazed and greatly annoyed that they were all pretending. They could not have missed the blood. When Layla asked Jane if she was okay, a shiver ran down her friend's body. Jane said she would go rest for a bit. 
She walked to her room, barely holding herself up. Moreover, she began to feel very nauseous. She quickened her pace to reach her room faster, but she could not. She leaned against the wall. Jane could not forget the bloody sheet. That smell made her feel extremely nauseous. Why did she have to learn about this right now? And everyone else simply did not care. Moreover, why did she have to meet this person right now? Jane recalled the doctor's words that he would definitely help her. And when Mr. Uberly ordered her to return to her room, Jane pondered and lowered her gaze. So Mr. Uberly simply walked past her. But then he suddenly stopped. After all, his curiosity won out. And he asked Jane what she had just seen. The maid froze in shock. Mr. Uberly said he had been looking for a meeting with her to say something. He asked Jane to stop going up to the second floor. Why did he speak to her as if he were a father? Mr. Uberly added that it was a warning, but that was the last straw for Jane. She was fed up with it all and simply exploded. She began to yell at Mr. Uberly, accusing him of always hovering around her and meddling in her affairs. Jane said she had come to work here on her own, and he hadn't hired her. So she didn't understand why she had to listen to Mr. Uberly's empty chatter. She asked what right he had to order her around if the second floor was her workspace. Suddenly there was a deathly silence. Mr. Uberly was just as he always was. He only said what he wanted and didn't explain his reasons. So Jane decided to end the conversation herself, saying she was grateful for the rescue. But she asked him not to approach her again and walked away. Suddenly, Mr. Uberly's face turned red. He asked Jane to stop and wanted to touch her. But another maid arrived. She announced that the mistress was waiting for him. Jane heard this and walked away quickly. Mr. Uberly simply said he knew, and he watched Jane leave. Meanwhile, the maid returned to the room. It seemed she felt a little relieved. She accidentally grabbed a key. Suddenly, she realized the room was locked. Was there some secret about locking the room? Suddenly, she recalled Mr. Uberly's question about whether Jane had seen anything. Did he think she had seen something? Something she shouldn't have seen. Jane decided that Mr. Uberly simply had a guilty conscience. Otherwise, why would he refuse to let her go to the second floor? She resolved to go back there again. Suddenly, an old memory awakened in Jane. Someone was shouting that the likelihood of the patient waking up was minuscule. Another was shouting that there was no more money for treatment and lamenting that there was no hope. Jane had definitely seen this in a dream. She woke up completely unaware of how long she had slept. Suddenly, she noticed the sandwiches that Layla had probably brought her. Jane didn't understand why she had woken up, but it felt like she could smell the hospital in reality. She decided to sleep a little longer when suddenly she heard those sounds. And then footsteps were heard. It was already very late. Every time Jane heard a strange sound, strange things began to happen. Was it happening again this time? Jane approached Layla and began to wake her, but she didn't wake up. Suddenly, Jane heard something else. The doorknob suddenly began to shake rapidly. Jane was engulfed by a terrible panic. She hadn't broken any rules. Why was this happening? When suddenly Layla appeared above Jane and woke her, it turned out that Jane had overslept. She couldn't believe it was a dream. No, it was definitely not a dream. Jane might have simply lost consciousness. The mark on her leg had also disappeared. The doctor had left the previous evening. The bruises on her leg had healed on their own. The pain in her head and leg, the feeling of another's presence, all vanished as soon as Jane spoke with the doctor. Layla asked Jane if she would clean up on the second floor. Jane did just that. While cleaning, she noticed a note. Perhaps someone from the guests had left it. It turned out that someone had used this room. Suddenly, Jane realized that this was the room of that man, but he had left. Had he forgotten to take everything? Jane mocked the fact that Mr. Uberly always walked around with an expression as if he knew everything, yet he was so scatterbrained. She thought that if it weren't something important, he wouldn't have left it behind. So she decided to take a quick look, but noticed her name there. For some reason, chills ran down her spine. The note briefly stated, do not take any action, wait for the next time. And that was it. Jane was certain it was from Mr. Uberly, because the doctor couldn't know her name. She reread those two sentences over and over, trying to understand what they meant. When suddenly, a sound from the piano echoed from above. But who could be playing it? Meanwhile, it was time for a break. Layla said that it was the mistress playing it. And then she asked if Jane had no appetite, since she hadn't touched her food. Jane said she was eating, but in reality, she didn't want to at all due to the recent events. Layla said she heard Jane had requested a leave of absence. She explained that she was going to the city for business, and she wanted to fix some things. Suddenly, Layla clanged loudly on a plate. But Jane said she hadn't done anything. The break ended, and Jane continued working. She thought about those strange things, and decided that they didn't affect her life at all. Although there hadn't been any significant changes in her life. She didn't understand why she felt so anxious. Jane could look for a new job while away. First, she needed to find a place to stay. Suddenly, behind her, a young lady appeared who didn't even look the maid in the eye. Jane didn't understand what was happening and decided that the young lady was about to pull some trick again. But she simply sat down calmly in a chair, after which she demanded snacks. Jane didn't understand at first, since the young lady hadn't even asked or said please. 
The lady called Jane deaf and repeated again, tea with cookies. After which she yelled at Jane once more. Meanwhile, there were strange sounds coming from the storage on the second floor. Layla immediately ran in and found Jane under a pile of everything. She asked Layla to help bring tea and cookies. Jane brought everything and asked if the young lady was satisfied. The young lady ordered the maid to get butter and syrup and serve it to her. Jane was shocked by such rudeness, but Layla reacted faster. Suddenly, the young lady refused, saying she hadn't called Layla. She ordered it to be served to Jane. Poor Jane was buried under a pile of everything. The tea had gone cold, the cookies were dry, a new spoon was needed, and the cup wasn't right either. That little brat was so annoying. Who taught her manners? Jane decided to disappear for a while. How long could she be called? But on the other hand, Jane wanted to find out if the mark had disappeared from that brat. Meanwhile, events shifted to the maid's room. Jane shouted that she was fed up with it all. It turned out that the young lady had said to prepare everything the same for the next day. Layla tried to calm Jane by saying that the young lady was just showing her affection, but that didn't please Jane. Layla recalled that now her friend would be responsible for the second floor, and when there were no guests, she would work with her. Jane was surprised, since the rooms on the second floor were assigned to another maid, Okrilla. Layla interrupted Jane and asked whom she was talking about. She said that Jane was completely confused since there hadn't been anyone before. Who was responsible for the second floor? This was already eerie. How could Layla forget so much? After all, they had been close with Okrilla. Layla quickly shifted the conversation to dreams. Jane didn't understand if her friend had memory problems or was just pretending. Meanwhile, morning arrived. It began with surprises. Someone had tossed a mouse into a vase of flowers. Jane simply threw it out. She hadn't seen Okrilla all morning. She hadn't even heard any mention of her. When suddenly, the piano played again. This meant the mistress was feeling well again. At that moment, Layla rushed in. She asked for help on the first floor. Layla said she had to go to the second floor's storage but had forgotten the keys. She felt very embarrassed, but she had a few unfinished tasks and couldn't go herself. So she asked Jane to go get the key from the manager's office on the first floor. Jane couldn't believe that Layla was really that forgetful. Despite Layla's insistence, Jane felt that her friend was hiding something, and it troubled her. Suddenly, Jane noticed the piano on which the mistress was playing. She was surprised that there was no room where the piano could stand. Meanwhile, Jane reached the manager's office on the first floor. There was no one inside. But Jane found the key she wanted, so she left a note herself. Suddenly, Jane realized that usually the storage rooms on each floor were always locked. But that day, Jane hid in the second floor's storage. Why was it open at that moment? The key was kept in the office. To take it, one had to leave a note. If only Jane could remember who had taken it that day last. Suddenly, Jane noticed that there was no column for the date. Meanwhile, Jane came to Layla. The young lady was there as well. Jane handed the key to Layla and asked about the column for the date, whether she should fill it in herself. Layla inquired if something was wrong with the dates. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by a loud thud. It was a young lady. For some reason, she was angry that the maids were talking so much. After all, they had a lot of work to do and couldn't even bring her tea. After which, the young lady stomped off, how she irritated everyone. Meanwhile, it was time for Jane to escape this madness. She asked Layla if she should buy something in town. Jane saw her friend reading a book and suggested buying a new one. But Layla declined and asked her to be careful. Those words somehow stuck in Jane's mind. Suddenly, she noticed the sad gaze of the young lady looking out the window. Jane froze for some reason as if hesitating, after which she decided to put an end to it. If she could get a break, then it was worth using it to leave and unwind a bit. Suddenly, someone asked Jane where she was planning to go. Out of nowhere, a guy emerged from behind a tree. He said it was quite presumptuous. The guy was in uniform, but it was working hours to be wandering around like that. Jane didn't know him, but it seemed he was just loafing around. So she asked who this young man was. The guy suddenly, after a brief pause, told her not to make him disappointed in her. He was outraged that Jane had already forgotten him. Suddenly, she began to bow and apologize. After which, the expression on the guy's face changed sharply, and he cheerfully said there was no need to apologize since they had just met. He introduced himself as Ethan, and Jane barely restrained herself from hitting this joker. Jane asked what Ethan meant when he asked her not to leave. He said the weather was lovely today, and he was worried that if Jane left, she wouldn't want to come back. When Jane assured herself that the reason was only that, she immediately bolted away as she didn't like the company of this guy. Suddenly, Ethan stopped her, calling her Miss Jane. He asked if people often told her that she was quite brave. Jane was in shock and wondered why Ethan was asking her about that all of a sudden. Just then, a very loud and sharp sound was heard. Ethan said it was wonderful. Jane was outraged that he thought it was cool since a terrible crash had occurred. Ethan said it seemed Jane no longer had any reason to go into the woods. But Jane didn't understand what Ethan meant. Before she could get an answer, Layla came running. She was flustered, saying there was an urgent matter. And then she saw Ethan. It turned out they were acquainted. When Layla asked why Ethan was with Jane, the guy decided to make a quick exit. Jane asked her friend what had happened. 
Layla completely forgot about it, saying that Jane wouldn't be leaving the house this time. While Jane was fuming, Layla explained that on the second floor the young lady had lost some important item, and she ordered everyone to drop everything and find it. Layla asked if Jane knew what it could be, but she didn't know anything either. The young lady ordered that Jane be brought to her because she needed to figure it out before dinner. She asked if the maid understood what would happen to all of them if they didn't find this item. The young lady left and commanded that the maid report everything to her. Jane didn't understand what the young lady was talking about. A toy? A trinket? What could she have lost? Suddenly, a smile appeared on the young lady's face, and she laughed. Jane noticed this and finally understood. Jane shouted that this little brat was really pushing it, and she was irritated by Layla's calmness. After all, what kind of important item could cause so much fuss? Jane approached the young lady to say that the item hadn't been found, but this little brat told her to forget about it. The young lady said she couldn't remember, and if she couldn't remember, then the item wasn't that important. After which she laughed and told Jane to go about her business. Jane couldn't believe that this idiotic child had ruined her chance to escape this madness. She yelled and yelled, her emotions overwhelming her. It burst out of her that everything was hopeless if she couldn't find a way to fix the clock. But Layla said there was actually a way. After all, there was someone in the house who could fix the clock. This improved Jane's mood a bit. She asked who this person was, but Layla was silent for some reason. And this irritated Jane. Eventually, her friend confessed that it was Ethan. Jane exhaled calmly. Finally, she would fix the clock. Suddenly, Layla told Jane not to get too close to Ethan. Just fix the clock and that was it. No more requests. Layla asked Jane to promise her. Jane was shocked by such a request. Layla had never asked her for anything like that before. Meanwhile, a new day arrived. Jane went outside to look for Ethan. She recalled Layla's words. After all, her friend never spoke ill of anyone. Suddenly, Jane heard someone talking. Someone was shouting that they had been betrayed. Jane realized the cries were coming from the woods. A woman's voice screamed that he had promised to follow the plan but was just playing with her again. Jane listened closely, and those voices seemed quite familiar to her. It was Ethan. He said he didn't remember what he had promised the maid. The maid suddenly grabbed him and started tugging, shouting about some boy. Then Jane took a step forward, which the others heard. Jane immediately began to apologize for not trying to eavesdrop. But the maid, Aileen, didn't care. She was furious and accused Jane of sneaking up on them like a rat. Ethan told Aileen that she became unattractive when she lost her temper. But Aileen ordered him to shut up, then showed him the middle finger and left. For a while, they stood in shock. Then Ethan calmly asked what Jane wanted since she was looking for him. Jane completely forgot about that and said that Layla had advised her to find him to fix something. Ethan asked if Layla had really said that. Jane didn't pay attention to it and just wanted help. Ethan agreed, telling her to come to him after work in the room at the end of the second floor of the annex. Meanwhile, the events shifted to the second floor in the living room. There sat the shocked young lady at what had been brought to her. The young lady asked if Jane had prepared all this herself, and it turned out she had. Jane thought the young lady had no chance of finding a flaw now. It turned out to be the opposite, and the young lady said Jane deserved a reward. Jane was very happy, expecting a cool reward, but the young lady said Jane could play with her, and the maid's face changed sharply. Jane said she had a lot to do, but the young lady said she couldn't lie to her because she knew the maid was free when there were no guests. All day, Jane couldn't shake off the game of hide-and-seek with the young lady. Layla saw the exhausted Jane. It turned out that the young lady with her small body could hide literally anywhere. Jane didn't even know there were so many places in the house. Layla was as positive as ever. Suddenly, Jane stood up and said she was going to Ethan. Layla told her to come back earlier. Meanwhile, things were even stranger with Ethan. In his room, there was a huge pile of clocks. Jane handed him her clock. Ethan said there was something special about the clock. He began to fix them, noticing that Jane really loved them as the clock was heavily worn. Jane admitted that it was a gift. She had time to think, and Jane realized she hadn't heard any strange sounds for a long time. After the scar disappeared, she felt much better. She wanted it to stay that way. Ethan noticed the gloomy expression on Jane's face. He asked her to answer him a question, and then Ethan wouldn't take any money from her. She agreed. Who doesn't love a freebie? Ethan suddenly asked how Jane felt about dancing. That was a question she definitely didn't expect. He meant the ball in the house but Jane couldn't even imagine such a thing in this house. Ethan laughed, saying it wasn't quite right to call it a ball. He explained that it was a party for a birthday. Jane decided that they held dances in honor of the birthdays of those who lived there. But Ethan had to disappoint Jane. After all, only the mistress could enjoy such things. Jane felt embarrassed for such naivety. But she couldn't even believe that due to poverty, a ball was just a birthday party. Suddenly, Jane caught herself thinking that she had been here for a long time but still hadn't seen the master, only his wife. Ethan saved Jane from the flood of thoughts by saying it would be her first ball. He said the maid had been waiting for it very much since it would be unforgettable. Jane asked when it would happen, but Ethan simply replied that soon. He added that when the time came, the whole house would be very lively. 
so Jane would understand everything then. Meanwhile, the maid was already returning to herself. She looked at the clock and decided it was time to get to work. Ethan regretted not having a clock face and feared Jane would hurt herself on the glass, so he removed it. He said he had seen how Jane valued the clock, but advised her to be even more careful with them. Jane recalled this conversation and thought that Ethan was a good person. But why then Layla? Suddenly, a loud sound echoed. Jane flinched in fear. Had it started again? But the hallway was empty. Perhaps Jane had just imagined it. In the meantime, she had already returned to the room, but Layla was not there. Maybe she had gone to the bathroom, but it was already nine o'clock. Jane worried that something might have happened to her friend. Just then, Layla returned. Jane shared that she was very glad she had gone to Ethan, and she caught herself thinking that she had been really quite nervous. She hoped that in the future she could always be like she was today. Meanwhile, a new day had dawned. Someone had knocked over a bucket of water. It turned out to be Ailey, who feigned regret over the incident. Then she said that they were also to blame. Why leave things in the middle of the hallway? Jane realized that it had been intentional, but Ailey had the right to be angry. Yet, this maid had been behaving this way ever since that conversation with Ethan. Jane had heard that Ailey was the personal maid of the young lady. Recently, the young lady had been quite quiet, so she assumed she could enjoy a peaceful life. Suddenly, Layla tripped over a box and fell. What kind of morning was this? Jane asked why Layla had been wandering around in a daze. Then she suggested that she rest, as her friend must have been very tired. Just then, the young lady appeared, startling Jane to death. She asked the little maid when she had managed to arrive. But in response, she received silence, and the young lady left. Jane asked what had happened to her, but Layla didn't know. Then she remembered that a guest would be arriving at the house. But Jane already knew this. The person would come in two days, even though she did not want to see him. But she was responsible for the parlor, so the meeting was inevitable. Suddenly, a loud crash was heard again. Jane saw that Layla had simply fallen suddenly. Could this be it? 